Hello, Sunny Houston. Hi, Brian Tedda. Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy Monday. So we had a, a good show today, mm-hmm. but I wanted to start by talking about last week because we haven't had you here since President Biden visited. Oh, that's right. What was your reaction to the interview and, and how he did? I've gotten so many people in my life, I don't know about you, but so yeah. many people were coming up to me. How was he? Was Did he seem good did he seem sharp did he seem this and i thought else? he did i, I thought, thought so i thought he was great you know he is just a decent human being that's my takeaway too and um i told one of my friends you know you don't go into public service to make money right when i was a federal prosecutor the most i made after my service there, and I started in 1997, was $75,000. Even supervising- With all that schooling and all that. Other people, you, yeah. school loans. How much debt you must have had, yeah. It, it $75,000. Wow. Now that may sound like a lot of money, but you can go to a law firm and immediately make double. Mm-hmm. So think about someone who by age 29, even a year before he was allowed to (laughs) hold office, decides this is my life's career. So you don't do it for the money, unlike Donald Trump, who obviously is doing it not only for the money, but to stay out of jail. Um, I just find real decency in that. 50 years of public service is is really quite incredible. And um, what some people don't know about my relationship with with Joe Biden is um, when he was, you know, very involved in passing the Violence Against Women's Act. I was a federal prosecutor who prosecuted domestic violence. And um, I reached out, you know, to the group and he had me moderate sessions. He had me host things. I have pictures with him. That's great. Yeah. And 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 we got to know each other. And when he started running uh, for president, I uh, wrote an op ed in the Washington Post with a group of friends that went a little viral mm-hmm. about how he needed a black agenda to win, he needed to choose a black female running mate, and he needed to put a black woman on the Supreme Court. Hey. And and we got all of those things. Yeah. Um, the black agenda is still working on, um, but I did it with um, Jamel Hill and, and Alicia Garza and a, a group of others, just really, um, Tiffany Cross, a, a group of incredible women. And you know, he called me on the phone to ask my opinion. Oh, that's wonderful. And that's something. Yeah. And the other um, little anecdote that I'll give is uh, the last time Dr. Jill Biden was here, I was telling her that it was Paloma's first time uh, voting. She had just turned 18, May 4th. And I said, she's really looking at the issues. Mm-hmm. She really is looking at the issues. That's great. But you should know that, you know, these kids care, they care about the climate. They care about the character of the peop- a person. They care about the personal attacks. They care about so much. And she said, um, you know, may I have your address? And she wrote a letter to Paloma. And she really wrote it. She really wrote it. That's wonderful. And like mentioned things that I spoke to her about. That's great. And Paloma took a picture uh, of it. I'll show it to you. Yeah. I think that's a that's just a decency that's something. And, and when he and she came out and, and hugged all of us, I told her, thank you. I thanked her for the letter. And then he also hugged me and thanked me for my work with him. So oh, he remembers great. that. Yes. So don't tell me that he doesn't. And those, that was years ago. No, he, I mean. He was sharp. Yeah. He will be remembered as the George Washington of our time who was able to show this country how to pass the torch. Sure. Is that Hamilton teach him how to say goodbye thing. Yes, yeah. he taught people how to say goodbye. And the history books will look upon his presidency as I think one of the most successful in our history and Certainly the history term. books yeah. will be so kind to him. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, going back for a second, talking about uh, first paychecks. This is just always stuck in my mind. My first paycheck. Yes. When I was a production assistant at the Montel Williams show. <laughs> Uh, I remember this fondly because uh, it was three hundred and seventy-four dollars and two cents after taxes, yes. and I know that because every day, every Friday, I would run to the check cashing place. Yes, the ge- yes, and the there ge- was a charge for the check yes, cashing was. place. Yes, there was, and that was that was what got me through the weekend. Was my three hundred and seventy-four dollars? I uh, yeah, yeah. I have similar memories. I got yeah. my working papers at sixteen because mm-hmm. I grew up pretty poor, 
and uh, I worked for O. Henry's Film Works. I did not make as much money as you made oh, wow. as a producer um, because I was high school mm-hmm. schooler. Uh, and I couldn't believe at the time how much um, was taken out for like Social Security. It's a, it's a big wake-up call. A- it's like such yeah. a wake-up call. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why when I hear... Republicans talking about getting rid of Social Security, which I have been, you know, putting in sure. to since I was 16 years old, and mm-hmm. I worked all through college and also worked all through law school. I get pretty upset. Yeah, understandably. I mean, you know me, Brian. I've mm-hmm. got like 50 million jobs. Yes, you want what's coming to you. I got, I got, a, I got a lot of <laughs> hustles. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, something that's going to help form the policies of the future mm-hmm. is tomorrow night, the vice presidential debate. Yes. Uh, it's Senator J.D. Vance and Governor Tim Walz. We talked about it on the show today. How do you think it's going to go? You know, I'm rooting for Tim Walz because mm-hmm. um, as a person who was on a debate team, in my experience- That's not surprising to me at all <laughs> that you were on a debate team. Right. It's, it tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, my experience informs me that those that appear to be the most authentic- and that are um, most comfortable with themselves and are willing to make mistakes are those that win. And when I say that, I mean that. Like, yeah, you have to know a little bit about the policies and um, you have to know um, uh, a lot about your opponent and their policies and and, and you wanna get some some points, but people remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that. And I think when you look at him as a coach, you know, and a dad of a special needs kid and this sort of Midwestern guy who calls people weird, but sticks up for women's rights. And then you contrast that with someone who pretended to grow up in, you know, in poverty, but like maybe just spent the summers in poverty. And you talk about someone who went to Yale Law School, but didn't go into public service right away instead went to silicon valley and made a lot of money and had those people back him up and when you're contrasting that with a person who you know is trying to distance himself from project 2025 when in fact he wrote the forward for the book of the person who wrote project 2025 feels like you've been prepping for the debate (laughs) (laughs) oh i could debate yeah i know you could um i think that people will take away who made them feel better and who made them Mm -hmm. feel like, wow, this person has true values and character. There's been a lot of, uh, it it feels like it's kind of setting the tone for uh, lowering expectations, but there's been a lot of things coming out of Mm -hmm. that camp where he's saying he's not a good debater. He's very nervous. You know, do you, do you think that's real or do you think? I think it is real and I like it. Mm Mm-hmm. I humility goes a long way. I think so too. Self deprecation. <laughs> so yeah. You know, he's like, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. 75% of Americans are watching this. Right. But to be clear, he is a governor. Yeah. Right. It's not like he, he is fell a state off the person. Yeah, no, he's... he he knows uh, what he's doing. And I am, um, I think, made more comfortable by the fact that he's got Pete Buttigieg, who I mm-hmm. believe is one of the smartest people I've ever met. He's so impressive. He's so impressive. Playing J.D. Vance mm-hmm. um, and, and de- in debate prep, the person that you prep with can make a huge difference. Supposedly he said to Kamala during the vetting process mm-hmm. that he said, I'm not a good debater. And yeah. she still picked him, which is an interesting thing. I, yes. I think maybe she was just so taken with him personally. With his character. Yeah. With his character. I mean, again, this this notion that she's a joyful warrior, I believe that. Yeah. I don't I think she's a warrior, mm-hmm. <laughs> to be clear. But I think she's pretty joyful. I've met her many times as you sure. know. I've been to the residence. Um she's been she likes to laugh, she likes to dance, but she also gets down to business. And I, I think she goes by gut. And you look at the at him and and I don't know. He's he kind of makes you feel comfortable. Like, I think so too. Like the guy you want to have a beer with. Right. I don't drink beer, but like they always say that in politics. You mm-hmm. know, who do you want to go out for a beer with? Right. I'd like to hang out with them. Yeah. No, I think so. I think so. So th- it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I I enjoy for the show. I enjoy the lead up and the follow up <laughs> to these debates. So I'm sure we'll be we'll be talking we about it all week. We will be chatting about it. Yes. Yeah. For sure. And watching it, and there'll be texts going on that night. Yes, and we will be always. texting you, Brian. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm <laughs> Um, 
Another thing we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks are celebrity endorsements in the election. And the latest was this weekend. Yeah. Zachary Levi uh, endorsed Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And we also talked about the, That's Chap- the, Sh- Chapel- the Shazam guy, right? Yeah, who's okay. been on the show. Yeah. And uh, Chapel Roan. Chapel Roan's a big singer. My oh, okay. uh, my daughters are obsessed, but uh, she's one of the hottest singers there are right now. Okay. And um, she's saying she's voting for Kamala. That's, w- that's one of my pop culture blind spots because I don't get know there. who that is. And, oh, I'm, I'm certain you would know <laughs> Hot to Go if you heard it. I promise you. If, even if you didn't hear it on the radio, it's in a Target ad, it's everywhere. Um, but she said she's voting for Kamala, but okay. won't endorse her because she sees issues on both sides. And okay. she got a lot of flack for that and That's is having fair. a hard time with it. Do you think celebrities have a responsibility to endorse a candidate? You know, I, I've kind of flipped this around in my head a lot. Yeah. And I do think heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? I mm-hmm. think that's Shakespearean. Um, and now I'm s- sounding like the nerd that I am. But I think that when you have a platform, you should use it for good. Sure. And this is an election unlike any other. I mean, we had Dana Bash on it, mm-hmm. on our show today, to talk about how different this election is. Yes. And and I also believe that no one should sit on their couch. I think on November 6th, even though we may not know who the winner is, we may know, you know where things are headed, you don't want to look at your kid or your parents or your grandparents or your spouse or your partner and say, oh my God, what could I have done? Right. Right. And so I think if you are a a Trump supporter and you have a big platform, then you should say I'm a Trump supporter Mm -hmm. Um, because maybe that normalizes. Right. I don't agree with that, but maybe that normalizes him for someone who is 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 not invested. And maybe with the singer, you know, if she says, I don't believe in all her policies and I have problems on both sides, but this is the choice that I'm going to make. You know, maybe people will listen to that. And so I... I they're speaking their truths, basically. They're speaking their truths. I generally don't think that these endorsements carry a lot of weight, mm-hmm. but I am um, happy for this election cycle when someone is willing to put it out there. I mean, we put it out there like every day. Yes, you do. And... and we pay the consequences It's for funny. It. The Zachary Levi thing came up in the Hot Topics meeting. And yeah. to a person, you were all like, "That's if he's totally a Trump f- supporter, he should say it. And totally that's what fine it is. for and me. And everyone was fine with it, which is yeah. one of the reasons we didn't get to it today is because everyone had the same yeah, we, opinion. Yeah, we all agreed. Like, but, if, that's your, if that's your jam, then yeah. go ahead. Vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. He's been a guest on the show, and you all enjoy talking I to him. I thought he was lovely. Yeah, yeah. so interesting. I, I would like to hear his reasons. Mm-hmm. I actually... that he, he was an RFK guy and went with RFK. And then feels like if you can't. That, that makes yeah. me a little concerned. Sure. <laughs> but um, I'd like to hear his yeah. Trump reasons. No, maybe he'll come on. Yeah. Be interesting. I, I would be very interested yeah. in that booking. I think so too. All right, we're on it. <laughs> uh, there was another topic on the list today with the headline, Is It Normal to Hate Your Spouse? Mm-hmm. It was sparked by an interview that Jamie Lee Curtis did where she said the secret to her 40 years of marriage mm-hmm. includes patience perseverance, Mm -hmm. and a really good dose of hatred. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with Jamie Lee? I think hatred is a strong term. Sure. But no one can push your buttons like your spouse, I feel like. Uh, But I generally don't like the word hate. Like, I I don't Mm -hmm. don't hate anybody. But I would say a a, a good dislike (laughs) is probably, you know, I find myself in that space. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm disliking Manny today. Okay, well, what's going on? Sure. You know, Manny is one of those people that wants everybody to get along. He's sure. like, can everybody just get along? I appreciate that about him. Yes. 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 You know, he's he's walked me off a ledge many- More than once. And many, I've enjoyed it. Yes. Over the past eight, nine years, when I've wanted to send you some text messages, he's like, let's- He's let's, my secret weapon. Yeah, yeah. He's like, let's stop mm-hmm. a minute. But sometimes he takes it too far. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have a very large friend group, a very right. close friend group. Um, and I- tend to be the glue of that group Mm -hmm. because I'm the one that kind of sends text messages and phone calls and I have all the happy birthdays in my, I I know people are going to be surprised to think this, right? But I have to hear this, but I've got like all the happy birthdays in my phone and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Missed my birthday. And I did. I didn't know. Keep going. August 30th. Yes. Oh, look at that. It's in my calendar now because those those things matter to me. Thank you. And so when I I had a falling out with, with one of the people in the group. Now, my in my opinion, 
And it was not my fault. If I didn't break it, I'm not going to fix it. Okay. I've heard you say that before. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't break it. I'm not going to fix it. Right. Um, I don't go out of my way to be mean to people. I don't go out of my way to talk badly about people. And when people do that, um, it offends my sensibility. All right. So something's going on in the friend group. So for me, um, I put friends in different buckets. Mm Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean the friend is out of the group. It just means that the friend is now in a different bucket. He would like the friend to be in the same bucket. So he's trying to fix things around you? Yes. And is trying to, and is calling the friend and (sighs) taking the friend out to lunch and begging the friend to fix it, to fix the friend group, asking me to invite the friend places. And again, I did not break it. I do not need to fix it. Is it possible that the friend could fix it if you wanted them to? The friend has apologized. Okay. But this is not the first time the friend has behaved in this manner. So there really is no fixing it in your mind. So when people show you the first time Mm -hmm. who they are, you should believe them. Mm -hmm. When people show you the 10th time who they are, you must believe them. I believe the person now. The person can still hang around, but... It is where it is. Ooh. Is there a chance the person will listen to this podcast and recognize themselves? Perhaps. Mm-hmm. But the person doesn't have a lot of self-awareness. And what does uh, Manny say when you tell him enough? He's very upset. Oh. Which leads me to dislike him because a house <laughs> divided cannot stand. No, that's true. That is Lincoln. Yes. And We got Lincoln. Um, we got Shakespeare. We got a lot going yeah, on. We yeah. got some Austin. I'm, it's my inner yeah. nerd. And... um. You know, you got to be ride or die for me. Yes. Which Manny is generally. Screw the friend. Screw the friend. Okay. So. We have a title for the podcast. Screw the friend. <laughs> there we go. So that's where we're at. All right. Well, I'm, I'm fascinated so by this. I dislike him today. Okay. Well, hopefully it will not take. And if he continues, take... oh. I'll dislike him tomorrow. Oh. All right. Well, I might send this to Manny to listen to. Just out of <laughs> brotherly love. Um, all right. On that note, I'm excited to hear where this lands. Yes. Um, remind me never to break anything. <laughs> and uh, thank you for kicking off the week with me, Sonny. Thank you, Brian. You can check our episode description for the number to call or text us. Do not break things with Sonny Hostin. <laughs> Leave us a nice, kind review. And uh, tomorrow I'll be back with Alyssa. Thanks so much. You